Um, I'm devastated, mate. I um, I worked so hard for this um, and wanted it so bad. Hey guys, Brendan Bradford here from Sporting News. I'm joined by Andrew Maloney, who honestly has just been robbed in one of the most disgraceful decisions we've seen in a long time in his rematch with Joshua Franco in Las Vegas. Um, made a couple of hours on from the fight, Andrew. Um, how are you, first of all, and what's what's sort of been going on in your head the last couple of hours? Um, I'm devastated, mate. I... Um... I worked so hard for this um, and wanted it so bad. Uh, for the last five months since our first fight, there hasn't been a second of the day that I haven't thought about this fight and and winning my world title back. And I did absolutely everything possible to make sure that that would happen. And I felt great tonight. I knew that I was winning the fight comfortably and I would have continued to. And I believe I would have broken him down and stopped him in a matter of rounds. Um, I'm just devastated that they robbed me of this moment. And I should be celebrating right now and be a two-time world champion, but it was taken away from me. So they stopped it. They've said, well, the, the referee, um, Russell Morris, said he saw a hit, hit clash in the opening round. They went back and they watched numerous replays um, Certainly, from where I was sitting um, in the commentary box, Andre Ward and Tim Bradley never saw a hit, but either we we watched it back about probably about ten times. Um, what what happened? Was there a hit? But what 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 caused the injury to uh, Joshua Franco's right eye? There's clear footage of me landing a jab on Franco where his eye looks fine. The jab lands directly on his eye. He holds his eye lets his hand down and the, dot, what the eye is already swollen. I don't know what more they needed to see on that replay. The, the instant replay is in use here in Nevada and they used it tonight, but they didn't change the decision and I just don't understand it. What was sort of going through your, your mind um, when, when the doctor sort of said he's not okay to continue just ahead of the, the third round, you celebrated. Um, and I think we all thought that you'd won the fight, TKO, obvious call. Um, as the minutes wore on in the round, what's going through your mind? Yeah, that's right. I celebrated because the referee hadn't made it clear to us that he'd called the that to be an accidental head clash. He should have told us that that was his ruling. And I I would have left, left his eye alone for another round and after, after four rounds, I could have then worked on the eye and it would have gone to the scorecards, but they made no communication that that was his ruling. So I celebrated and thought that I'd won by a TKO. Um, as I sat, stood in the ring for about 30 minutes and they watched over the replay tens of times, Andre Ward, Tim Bradley, they were all saying to me, there's no head clash, it's a jab. I thought I was, they were going to overturn the decision and I was going to be declared champion. But we stood there for half an hour and they did nothing. So all through sort of the, the second round, certainly, and I, I'm guessing the second half of the first round, you're assuming, that, like correctly, so you should have been, assuming that the damage was done through, uh, through a punch and, and obviously you would, you would keep going and if you had known that it was they had ruled a headbutt, you may you would have stayed away from that eye. Yeah, that's right. I would have, um, but I knew that it was from a punch, so I just kept throwing that jab, kept landing on the eye, and I knew that that would that eye would start to shut, and and I'd probably end up stopping him, which I did against Elton De Harry for the when I won the title. It's very similar, and he got stopped from a jab on the eye. And his eyes shut and they stopped the fight. And I, I pitched it in my head and I had a flashback of that. And I thought the same thing is going to happen tonight. I'm going to shut that eye with this jab and get my title back. Um, I just can't believe that they've robbed me this moment. It, it, yeah, it really hurts. When you were when you're in the ring waiting, like could you see 
screens? Like, were you able to watch all the replays we were seeing? What What was the sort of situation? Did you know what was happening? No, I couldn't see the screens, but I could communicate with Bob Aaron, Ted Bradley, Andre Ward, everyone who was watching the screens, and they were all saying to me and that there's it was from a jab. There's no head clash. And we stood there for half an hour and I just I'm just I just can't believe that they didn't overturn the decision when it was sitting there right in front of them, clear as day that that, that shot was from a jab and not a head clash. We saw, yeah, we saw Bob Arum. Um, he was pretty animated at times over that 25 minutes, half an hour. What, what, what kind of things was he saying to you? Yeah, he was, he was very um, pissed off at the outcome. Uh, and we've spoke with Bob and he said that he's doing everything he can. They've got lawyers onto it already to try and overturn the decision. Um, and he asked us to come into his office on Monday. So we'll go and do that. And he said, worst case, they've got options on Franco's next fight and it'll definitely be against me. He won't let him fight anyone else. And that's obviously good news. And, you know, hopefully they do overturn the decision. But which, you know, would be great, obviously. I've become champion again. But I'm still devastated they robbed me of that moment tonight to to be crowned champion in the ring and to be celebrating tonight, you know, all the hard work that I put in. What uh, we saw just before you were interviewed um, on the broadcast, we saw... Uh, Franco and his team uh, walking backstage and there are a few few uh, pleasantries exchanged, I suppose. What what were they saying to you and what were you saying back to them? Oh, his team were a joke. They uh, were screaming at me. One of them was telling me that I didn't want to be in there and I, I wanted out. Uh, one of them was telling me how badly he beat me in the first fight and he broke my nose, this and that. We're not... I'm not arguing about the first fight I'm arguing about tonight I beat him clearly and look I fought through a broken nose and perforated eardrums and a cut eye in that first fight and I fought and tried my best to win tonight as soon as it got tough he wanted out of there I could sense it he I could see in his body language at the end of the fight he knew that he lost he knew he knows that he doesn't deserve to have that belt yeah what, what is it you know what is it like from you watching him walk away with that belt over his shoulder that should be yours and you should be celebrating, you should be coming back home as a world champion? He, uh, he knows he doesn't deserve that belt. And, yeah, I don't think he'll be carrying it around too much. He knows he's not the champion. So the, the there'll be a, an appeal sort of process from here. It'll, it'll go through um, hearings and, and courts and things like that. But... Ideally for you now, what's what's next? Um, a third fight with with Franco obviously seems like the most logical option. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I'm devastated that they robbed me of this moment tonight, and I believe I would have outboxed Franco and stopped him, and there would have been no no call for the third fight. But obviously now there is going to be, um, even if I am declared champion and they overturned the decision I think people will probably still want to see the third fight so I'll leave that up to top rank and my team and what they want to do but I've got no problem fighting him again I, I know that I would have won convincingly tonight and i got no problem beating him again Yeah like you say the first two rounds um, just like a, a market difference from the first fight um, how did you feel like because you were you're doing, doing some really good work uh, over the six minutes that the fight did last yeah, and when I, I've said numerous times that loss lit a fire inside of me and I've trained like a demon the last five months and I've made some massive improvements. I believe I've improved more over the last five months than I have in any other stage of my career and I was on fire tonight. I felt great. I'm in the best shape of my life and I know that I would have won tonight so easily and that's what's disappointing and I've got full confidence I'll beat him again when we do fight, but it's just frustrating they took it away from me. And especially after the year you've had, well, you know, it's been a crazy year for everyone, but you spent so much time away from home. You've got a, a young son um, at home as well. And, um, you know, you sort of mentioned during the, the press conference last week that a, a win today or win tonight 
was going to set him up for the future. It wasn't just about, not just about claiming the world title, although that is a massive thing. It was about um, setting yourself and your family up for the future as well. And they've taken that away too. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, it's devastating. And um, obviously, yeah, it's been a crazy 12 months. It was exactly 12 months today since I won the title and then to lose the title, go through that heartbreak. And I've spent five months away from my son this year and my wife and family. And I've trained so hard and made so many sacrifices. I've spent a month in hotel quarantine by the time I get home now. And it's been a big year. Um, and it would have been worth it, you know, to go home with that world title and, as I said, they've taken that away from me too. So it is what it is. Um, hopefully we can do something about it. But, yeah, I don't know what to say, mate. It's, I'm devastated. So, yeah, all of, all of Australia, I think all of the boxing world, um, devastated for you and just uh, really disgraced and, and just ashamed at this decision because it was. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you look at it. It was a shocking call. So um, appreciate your time today. And it was tough to, to talk about it so soon afterwards. But, um, yeah, hopefully one way or another, it, it gets all resolved as best it could be. Obviously, you can't have that moment with your, your hand raised in the ring, but hopefully it gets sorted out one way or another. Hope so, mate. Hope so. And, um, you know, thank you for, you know, your support and, Thank you, everyone, for your support from back home in Australia. Um, it really means a lot. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much.